What's going on, everybody? It's another one with me, Canary yes. Mountains. Slice, S-L-Y-C-E. And we are the process. Process. Yeah, man. What's going, going on? on? What's going on? Everything's good on this side, man. You know, another day, another dollar. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Making it do what it do. Still kicking you, Dave. Hell yeah. How you been, bro? Good, man. Good. Just, uh, you know, uh, real happy, excited about the future and everything that's going on in life. Um, and also been doing my research. You know, I know you've been putting me on, put me on with different um, dope YouTubers and um, channels and stuff like that, man. I know you got one, one of your favorites that uh, you sent me this, this fire. I mean, you got me hooked on it now. I'm a subscriber. <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I subscribed with them at their uh, 100K party where they had to throw someone up. But what we're talking about right now is uh, <laughs> the Fresh and Fit podcast. So they had Andrew Tate on, and he had a very interesting perspective on depression, right? Where basically mm -hmm. he said depression isn't real. It's just, you know, a mindset. Something that he said that stuck out to me was that if you're living a depressed, if you're depressed, it's basically your mind telling you that you're living a depressing life. Mm. Yeah, I, you know, I agree, man. Like, it's a real, it's a real touchy subject, right? Because a lot of people do believe, um, and that's something that you know, saying right there. I was gonna say a lot of people do believe in depression, but it's the fact that the belief thinking that you have that is half of the problem, most of the problem, right there. Um, but that's a real touchy subject, man. I, I, you know, I agree. It's, I think it's a choice. I think it's a choice to think you're depressed based on how you feel in the moment. Okay. So I got a question for you too. Also. Um, so last year, you know, the pandemic hit, they told everyone to go inside. Right. A lot of people, the more extroverted people, they started feeling depressed. So like, do you feel like, uh, I mean, yeah, it's a mindset, but do you feel like it's something that you can help at that time? You know, like there's nothing, everything shut down. Like last year on single to mile, everything was closed everywhere in the U S so people had to stay home. People had to like miss birthdays, miss weddings or push their weddings up. And that would make you depressed, of course. But what are your, what are some of your thoughts on like that type of how, how depression is caused that way? Yeah. 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 Absolutely. I agree. I think we all have a time uh, in our life when we go through some sort of depression, right? Some form of depression. Um, but even, you know, like I said, a mind state, right, of depression. But I don't think it's like a disease. I don't think it's something that you're born with or something that you, you're you stuck with for many years or whatnot. I think it's, it's a feeling. I think it's based on how we feel in the moment. And how we feeling at that time? Yeah, um, COVID was very tough times um, mentally, phys mentally, um, because you're, you know, state could be a state of depression. And you're stuck in the house physically as well. Stuck in the house, can't can't move, can't be free like you want to. Maybe because of the restrictions, emotionally, uh, financially, right? So there's many ways that you can uh, go through these these uh, these moments or these periods. <coughs> Excuse me, these periods, but I. I think it's it's um, like you said, if it's a feeling, it's, it's temporary, right? So I don't think there's a true uh, long-term depression. Um, but, you know, I think everybody goes through it at some point. Oh, yeah, for sure. You know, <clears throat> I've had my own battles with depression before. But something that I've learned over time is that uh, you start kind of like doing little steps and little things to exercise your mind, whether it be like a creative outlet, you know, going out, even like jogging in the park, something like that helps me out. You know, just that change of scenery, just looking around, jogging around, you know, you're exercising, you feel better. So, yeah, I agree with you 100 percent. It's definitely not a disease like from day one, a doctor's not going to be like, oh, this baby's going to have a sad life, you know, but <laughs> I'm with you on that, bro. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And if anybody going through something out there, man, just know it's temporary. Oh, yeah, definitely. You know, just like any storm, one day you look up, sun starts cracking through and the storm's over. But let's go to another subject with the music this week. So 
Jay Z and Nas, bro. What you thinking? What you thinking? You heard it. I know you heard it. Woo! Sorry, not sorry. Oh, we we got a gutty. We got a gutty, man. Um, shout out to Jay Nas and Khaled. Um, they killed that joint. They really put it together really well. I think. I think they both did their thing. I think Jay and Nas always got some quotables, but I think Jay got. Jay gets had he got two quotables that, that stick out to me more. I don't know. Even though, even though I like I'm I'm a Nas fan to the death, I think Jay be having them slick talk, heavy punches. You know what I'm saying? Them one liners. What you think? Oh yeah, for sure. You know, Jay, he's always gonna be like one up. He's always since I was a kid watching him, he's always kind of had that one up on everybody. I think when he was on Renegade with Eminem, that's when, like, he was like, all right, never again. So every song I've heard <laughs> after that, every song I've heard after that, he's really came with it. And this, this is no different. You know, Jay had the better verse, of course. But Nas, that's not to, like, uh, put Nas down at all. Nas definitely came with it. He came with the energy that he needed for the record to pretty much match him the best he could. Yeah, you know what? You know, I think a lot. Well, sometimes as a, it's different, right? When you in a, when you in a, uh, a fan music mind state versus a creative music mind state. Being an artist, we both artists, right? So when I, I was thinking about it, and when I like, I was thinking about it before, like all, you know, when I think of them, I look at it from a fan perspective in my head, and I'm, you know, thinking about the quotables and verses. But from a creative perspective, I think. Like you said, is it's perfect how you put it because see what Nas did was they they both went off but in their own way, right? So I think Nas really just set up a real smooth alley oop to Jay and he just took that shit home. Oh yeah, for sure. I definitely love the song. It's good to hear like uh not like well I guess now at this point it's old school, but a more old school two thousands feel to a song. You know, that 2000 to 2010 feel where you come with the lyrics and you have the smooth beat. like, And they just brought the energy that you need and that we all kind of miss. All the older people, at least, kind of miss. Yeah, man. It's, it's a, it gives you appreciation. You know, when you hear it, it's like, it's like when, you, when you're consuming something, and you're just getting uh, uh, not a variety, but you're just consuming the same thing um, that's very similar over and over and over when you when you get something different you know you feel good you feel different it give you that 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 nostalgia you know that what you've been missing oh yeah for sure love jay love nas but what you got for me with sports this week what's going on in the nba oh man let me tell you now nah, i gotta read it off because i don't have it all memorized but so it's been some controversy there's a new tournament in the NBA, I didn't think I would be saying that in this lifetime, but there's a new tournament in the NBA. It happens uh, right before the tournament or right before the playoffs start. So this is the format. And I'm going to tell you what NBA player is not too happy about that. Well, first, so after the regular season, there's going to be um, like this. The seventh and eighth seed uh, is going to play one game. The winner is going to play. The winner uh, will be the seventh seed in the playoffs. Which is interesting. Uh, the ninth and tenth seed is going to play one game. The loser of the seventh and eighth game uh, and the winner of the ninth and tenth game will play each other to determine the eighth seed for the final playoff spot. Now, I know that's a mouthful, and I know that's kind of confusing because the first time I read it, it was just like, okay. But <laughs> it's um, you know, I think they're trying to shake things up. I think they could have did it in a better way, and I I don't I, I really don't see this happening again next year um but a lot of players reacted to it and the most famous player who reacted to it is the king james he said whoever created this rule should be fired what you think <laughs> oh yeah you know lebron's gonna definitely put his input in on it but hey it is what it is you know they're gonna do what they want to do and you just gotta go with the flow yeah, I mean, you know, I think uh, LeBron, it's like this, with him, with him, when he speaks out, because I rock with LeBron, I'm like, I don't mind, you know, I don't care. I appreciate him saying how he feels, and he a person too, you know, he got 
his own opinion too. Too, but I hate when people be like, "Oh, LeBron's just a brat. He can't get his way." Blah 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 blah. No, he got an opinion. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, for sure. I mean, but I mean, LeBron, he's definitely earned his stripes to kind of put his voice in. So that's okay. Yeah. Yes, sir. But yeah, that's all I got um, for sports. Um, it's gonna be interesting. We'll see. Let's see where the Lakers end up. Uh, yeah. Well, that's another one. Me, Nary Valance. S L Y C E. Peace. Yes, sir.